Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, this is one of those messages for individuals who just want to know spiritually where we are as a nation. And I can tell you that there are many areas right now that you and I may not live in, but there are those who are suffering. They are suffering with much grief as a result of things that have taken place in their communities that never did make the news. And then, of course, we live in a land of many, many rebellious people. And so when you are looking at the spiritual condition of our land, keep in mind that the one true God is not pleased where people could help. They don't where people could be of service. They refuse where people could give of money, of time just turn in a listening ear, they choose to ignore. People who have much are expected to give much, and that is not taking place with many of these A-listers. And so what goes up comes down, okay? To those individuals in grief and who don't mind taking a look at their Holy Bible, here's your word, and then we will move on to those individuals who are rebellious. Second Corinthians one, three and four says, blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So I'm burdened, I'm upset, I'm frustrated, I am just experiencing something that might lead to depression. I've got to lean on the Lord. I've got to pray. I've got to be around saints. I've got to be the individual that is going to rise above my situation, no matter how bad it hurts. No matter what the community experienced, I've got to be the one that is comforted by my holy God so that I can comfort others. When you ask that question, why is it that some people can be able to just rise out of their situations and look so good, even though they're going through so much? It is nothing but God. Don't believe, don't believe for one minute that they are somehow so supernatural, so just powerful beings. No, God, God is at work because that person is called. That person is chosen to be a comfort to many, many people. Sometimes God's spirit is so strong that even those that don't even believe in him are used temporarily to help many others. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. And that was taken from Second Thessalonians two sixteen and 17. And God says, even though when we look to the right, to the left, in front and in back of us, all this trouble here, there and everywhere. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You see, ancestors who went through some troubling times where this scripture definitely applies. Many of them were believers. I know that's not popular to say that nowadays, but many had a spiritual side. Many trusted in the one true God. Many, when they were going through The waters trying to get to the other side. They had their own personal faith, their prayers, and God answered. And that is why many of you all benefit. Folks want to talk about legal and illegal immigrants. We was all technically speaking illegal when we showed up in a land, in a land 
of milk and honey. Who gave you your legal right to be where you are? Who gave your ancestors legal right? Who gave your ancestors ancestors legal right? Oh, all of this comes back to the one true God, not man's pen and paper. <laughs> no, this goes back all the way to the one true God before man got involved and talked about his legal and illegal. You see, we know of individuals who have suffered much trying to do us right, not doing anything illegal, not breaking any laws or what have you, trying to do us right. And then they're being penalized. They're being hurt. They're being used and abused. And those stories you don't hear about. All you hear about is the agenda, is the plan is all of these individuals who are no, no good and aren't doing right and what have you. But what about those who are doing right, but yet they're being crucified? Lord Jesus, there's people that are in an emotional state of mind where they feel like they're going out of their minds. People around the world prepare for child sacrifice and they look for a perfect, what they want is a perfect, blemish-free child to sacrifice. And what better place to find these children than in America? Oh, this grief that I'm speaking of, I'm just being a little bit more specific. The grief that is affecting communities. The grief of losing a spouse. Widows are going through much. Widowers. Please help me, Jesus. I don't know how I'm going to pay these bills. I don't know where I'm going to go. Angry, even at the deceased, because the deceased had secrets and they found out some things. Where do you go to talk to somebody about what troubles you the most? That's why there's professional counselors, because people around you, nine times out of ten, co-workers, family members, friends, they don't understand. They don't understand how deep the pain is for some of these individuals. And then when we haven't gone through what some of these people have gone through, how can we really speak to the heart of the issue? All we can do is trust in God to give us the words that will encourage, that will inspire, that will motivate, and that will put somebody on fire for the Lord. Once you get your comfort, you go out and you comfort others and you give them the story of how you got through, how you got over, how you overcame. Oh, the ancestors, they got it right. They got it right when they went out and they spoke truth, when they went out and they sacrificed much when they went out as martyrs they got it right too many folks too many folks are passing by those who got tears coming down their eyes and not asking what's wrong too many folks are saying it's none of my business too many folks are saying i don't care i got enough issues but is there one is there one who has gotten over his or her grief who will speak truthfully, honestly, who will tell the story, the real story? Is there one? Our nation in a state of rebellion. Let's move on to this topic. It's crucial to state why every time you turn around. Something negative is going down. Something is hurting a group of people or a whole lot of people. Because there's always one who's pulling the strings, who's rebellious, who says God doesn't care. God, I don't even believe in God. What has God done for me lately? When I wanted God around, he wasn't there. So whatever. Rebellious people, defiant, arrogant, prideful, believes themselves to be their own God, self-absorbed, self-righteous, show up and tell them some truth about their ugly selves and they're going to show you a gun or show you uh, better than they can tell you by trying to put their hands on you or curse you out, insult you, disrespect you. Oh, some of you all, you know these people, you've just dealt with them and God said, don't worry. 
because the wicked will be dealt with. There are consequences to wickedness. Don't let them deceive you. Rebellious people suffer. I watched. I watched an individual suffer for years. And I still to this day don't believe that the person connected the dots as to why for so long God allowed the suffering. I ain't got time for God. I'm not listening to what he says. <laughs> Forget them doctors. Okay, you keep on talking that way. And you'll suffer more. You might get through the next the next incident or two because of the praying saints. But then the next, maybe not so much. Our nation has not only done some things that brought grief upon the land, but our nation rebelled when our nation could have worked with some folks. The prophets spoke, the prophetesses spoke, the deacons, the evangelists. Don't get it twisted, people. There are righteous folks that are reaching the ears of our leaders, but are our leaders really listening? You can look at the fruits on their tree in the media and you can see that, no, they're not. They're not paying attention because they are going full speed ahead with their own personal agendas. Or with the collective's agenda or the elitist agenda or whatever name you want to put on those individuals who are up to no good. It could be an organization that you're quite fond of or you once was a part of. But the rebellion is there. They're not listening to the people. They're listening to money. And some folks have even had to go so far. Righteous individuals had to go so far. I'm seeing this in the spirit to pay, to pay, to give money, to get righteous acts done. Oh, okay. You want this done? Yes. Well, uh, I mean, what, what do you want me to do? Well, I want you to vote this way, or I want you to say this, or I want you to go over here and look at this situation that took place in this community or this city or this state or this country. Can you do that? How much? I mean, can't you just do something out the goodness of your heart? How much? And so the plate gets passed around to collect monies and partial proceeds go toward trying to get some things that are righteous done. Terrible, isn't it? That's what rebellion does. I'm not listening to God. I'm not listening to the people of God. I'm not doing this. I'm not. Oh, wait, wait a minute. How much? Oh, wow. Okay. God bless you don't even believe in God. Don't don't say that to me. Well, okay. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> and thank you. You see? Proverbs 14, 16, and 17. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. That's all you have to do is just leave evil, right? Real simple, but so complex for so many people. But what about this and what about that? People always coming up with something just to justify their sinful lifestyle or stay in it a little while longer. Look, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool, the fool, the Bible says, rageth and is confident. That proud, arrogant, self-absorbed individual rages. You might not always see the rage or you may have never seen the rage. But they're quite proud in what they do. That's evil. That's wrong. Thinking God's not paying attention. He looks over the shoulders of the man who's on the phone doing things he ain't got no business doing. He sees what the woman is doing over there in the corner somewhere with the door closed. He sees what the children are doing over there in the next room when parents are nowhere around. He sees, he knows. Rebellion, that rebellious spirit shows up even in your own household. Rebellion, we see it once again in the media. Rebellion, that's what that is. I'm, I'm trying to figure out some things, somebody says. You know, every time I turn around, it seems like when somebody got something good to do or say or whatever, this man, he going against the plan. He going against the program. He always got some issue with this, that, and the other. That's rebellion at work, my friend. You got to bind up rebellion. You got to pray against rebellion. You got to ask the Lord to intervene on rebellion in Jesus mighty name. It doesn't matter who that media personality is. Rebellion. The woman doesn't want to be touched, right? But you had all these individuals who went on and did what they wanted to do to that woman and to others, right? 
That's rebellion. I don't have to keep my hands to myself. If I want to touch a woman, I'm going to touch a woman. If I want to touch a man, I'll touch a man. I don't care. When I like something, I'm going to touch it. You got some people who right now, the axe is going to fall sooner or later on them. Just on that attitude alone. Now I need for you to pipe down. I need you to calm down. I'm not going to stop rubbing my hand on this one and that one's back. I'm not going to stop complimenting women. I'm a flirt who, with whoever I want to flirt with. Okay, prideful, arrogant, doing evil. Okay. Sooner or later, the lynch mob coming for you. How long? How long will that person suffer? I said that in another message. How long? Because people are being rebellious. Oh, just keep giving it over to the Lord. I've seen it. I've seen things happen. I'm a witness. I've seen things happen to people who were so rebellious, so prideful, who didn't want to get things done in a community, nationally, internationally. I've seen it. God has pointed it out to me. When they don't suffer, don't worry about that. Their children suffer. Their children's children suffer. All of the work they put in, all of the time and energy they put in to be a success for my family to have this, that, and the other. And it all comes tumbling down. When the sun, when a daughter starts rising. Just sit back a while and watch how this movie unfolds internationally and nationally with some of these leaders. Satan can't cast out Satan. Isaiah 1, 19 and 20. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Real simple. Do we need to break that down? Let's read it again, though. If ye be willing... And obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And some folks, none of this foolishness is touching you. Why? Because you're willing and you're obedient. You're respecting your teachers. You're respecting your supervisors, your managers. You're doing what's right. What's happening over there don't have to come over there in your household. But the enemy, he'll worry you to death. He'll tell you all sorts of things. To make you believe that punishment's coming, even though punishment isn't coming. If you know you haven't done anything, what you worried about? I hope I'm encouraging someone. What are you worried about? Why are you all over there in other people's business when God has not called you? God's called select individuals who can handle some things, you see. And those people, they are not your worry warts. But you, every now and again, you get these worry wars, though, who show up in territories where they are ill-equipped. Yes, child of light, you can pray, but you don't have to always be. You see what I mean? I got to be present for this. I got to be proactive in this. I've got to make sure this law gets passed. I got to make, slow down, relax. Some people are dying prematurely via heart attacks. Others, they're dying prematurely from simply worrying too much. Our land is, yes, in a state of rebellion. Our land has been going through all sorts of grief. But what our land doesn't have to be is a unrighteous, ungodly, unwilling type of people. Who doesn't do what the Father has called. We don't have to be that way. Let other folks be that way. Okay. So be it. But you don't have to be that way. Warn people. Send them a memo. Pray about it. Show up at the meeting. But then. Back off. Allow the Lord. Allow the Lord. To start moving on the hearts. Of men and women. We are to submit time and time again. The scripture says we are to submit ourselves to the one true God. Ephesians 521 says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Proverbs 1221 says there shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. So while we got righteous folks being concerned about all sorts of things, um, we don't need to be. That concern because there shall no evil happen to the just, you see. But the wicked, 
The wicked, see, they know a lot. And they assume that, okay, well, I'm, I'm good right now because nothing bad happened, right? But they don't mind worrying some of the righteous, the just, to death to make them think that bad things are going to happen to them. You see how they do a little bit of reverse mind control, if you will? But the Bible says, the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Why are we breaking bread? Why are we signing documents with folk, getting partnered up with people who are filled with mischief? Why are we going over there into foreign lands dealing with people who got a long track record of being filled with mischief? Why are we going out here spreading all sorts of information about things that were created by people filled with mischief? Ephesians 5 eight for ye were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Children of light spread truth. Children of light will go <laughs> to places that many people won't go because God led them. Not because they just wanted to. And oh, I just feel like it. No, God led them. Children of light will break the stronghold spiritually. Children of light will go and find the information that nobody else can find because God is with them. Children of light walk in truth. Children of light believe not just in God, but the son of God. Children of light are filled with the Holy Spirit that is spoken about in Acts. Children of light are gifted. Children of light are the ones who Quell the storm. God will use them to quell the storm. So when there is this heightened activity of rebellion and grief, God will use the children of light to come in and counsel the grieved. God will use the children of God to go in and speak to the rebellious and not only speak to the rebellious, but you heard what I said about the wicked. The wicked will be dealt with. The wicked will experience consequence. Jesus. Somebody be reminded that you are strong in Christ. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You understand that? If God be for you, who, who can be against you? You see? Blessed is he. Listen to this. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 32, 1. Some folks did commit sins and they're wallowing in grief about their sins. But guess what? You confess your sin and you repent. See, first John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So all you got to do is confess your sin. Walk in that light. Say that salvation prayer. Live like a child of light. You see? And then you don't have to be worried like so many others. God is good. A righteous God. A loving God. A sweet God. And I thank him. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord right now. Praise the Lord. Because somebody's blessing is in your praise today. If you haven't taken the time out in a long time to give honor to the Lord, you don't have to run to the church. You don't have to run, but God will eventually lead you. But what you can do is start praising the Lord right where you are. You don't have to be around people to do that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance from rebellion. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance from grief. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for taking back our land. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for putting your angels at work. To take over our community. Thank you Lord Jesus for what is ahead. I see blessings for somebody. Or somebody's matter of fact. Not just one person but many people. Blessings are coming. Because you trust in the Lord. Because it is your prayers. You might be the only one praying on certain days. It's your prayers that's getting through to God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Financial trouble always plaguing some people. I'm going to close this message out with that. Our land faced with much financial trouble. We see trillions and trillions being spent here, there, and everywhere. While some people are taking that money and they're putting it in their pockets, so to speak. Putting it into their causes. Those who got the power to get that sort of thing done, that's what they get done. It's selfish interests, right? 
But here's the thing. God sees this sort of thing. And the very monies that they think are going toward this thing and that thing that we really don't need. But yet there's so many other things that we do need. God's going to turn that around. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're going to see some changes. Folks like to throw out 2020, right? 2020, that is going to be a turn of events. A year that produces a turn of events. This is the Holy Spirit using me, Lord Jesus. A turn of events is going to happen financially in this land. And it's going to be such a turn of events that people are going to go and say, wow, things are getting worse instead of better. But you know how God operates. It's going to be worse for select individuals, but not for others. And for some of you all, you're seeing changes financially right now. You're seeing the beginning of that now. What was going down is coming up. You see? And for a season, it's going to look real good. It's going to feel good. And people are going to buy things that they never had in the hood. Oh, Jesus. Because they're going to get it right. They're going to get it right with educating the public. With making the public learn more about finances. With setting things up in such a way that empowers people, you see, because when folks get tired of being broke, busted and disgusted and when they see that people who could help them are continuing to be rebellious, that is when the people rises up and says, you will not have my money any longer. I am changing. I'm redirecting my money, my finances. You see, we going to see it. Mark my words. God is with me. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And that business of want, want. Oh, we're already seeing that, aren't we? That want. No, uh, -uh it's not about want these days. It's about need. It's about need. What does my cupboard need? What does my refrigerator need? Okay. Even some folks said, oh, my closet. No, no, no. It doesn't need anything else. But thank you, though, for the sales, for the bargains, for the bargain basement discounts and everything else. But I don't need another thing. And I don't want to either. So don't even try to appeal to my five senses on want because that's not happening either. <laughs> yeah, that's the Lord convicting some folk. Because if you see that the land, the nation is troubled in finances, then there's something on the inside of us that feels convicted about spending money that, look, I really don't have it. And there's something on the inside of us that tells us, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I can't do holidays, boo. You older now. Let's sit down and talk, okay, shall we? <laughs> That's somebody who's talking to their child and to their grandchildren right now about this sort of thing. Lord Jesus, the rebellious, the grieved, and now the financially troubled in the land. But yet God is still working. God is still moving. God is still very much alive. Matthew 10 eight says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received and freely give. You freely received comfort. You freely received encouragement. Now you need to go out there and give. 1 Corinthians 16, 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. This was Paul. When a minister, when a leader, when a preacher, when a teacher, when people are called to speak to you, this business of holding back and I don't have and all that, when you know that you can come up out of pocket, that's wrong too. Because you see, we want so much, right? And God says, well, sow a seed. Um, a seed. Do you know what a seed is? It's small. It's small. You don't even miss a seed. A seed drops on the floor. Oh, there's about 50 other seeds, right? It's a seed. It's small. Forget these prosperity ministers who sit up here telling you to give these thousands and thousands of dollars. God said a seed. Muster seed faith. That's it. That's all it takes. In the first day of the week, it's not Monday, it's Sunday, according to our calendars in this land. And what are people doing on the first day of the week? You're giving an idol. A lot of folks giving an idol, giving an idol their time, their energy, and their money. People are called, people are chosen to do the things of God and they got to sit up here coming up with all sorts of ways to try to get some money to pay some bills. That's wrong. 
We're supposed to take care of the men and women of God. We're supposed to be taking care of our families too. And we're supposed to be sowing seed where we're getting fed as well. And what's this business of making excuses? Uh Uh-huh, the enemy messing with some folks, but yet they want some blessing. Well, I could tell you for some folks, the blessing is not coming financially. Because they are going to see some losses in the future. For some people, they'll say, well, I thought I was the one that was going to get blessed. And that the tide was going to turn for me in 2020 or, uh, you know, even now. No, because you don't do. You don't give. Mm Mm-mm. No, it's temporal. It goes up for a minute and goes down. Stingy people. Lord Jesus. Scrooge. Scrooge is among people, not just around Christmas time, but year round. But yet they want to be blessed. Righteous living. Getting up out of grief and allowing the Lord to comfort so that one can be able to comfort others. Staying away from the rebellious folk. After you've already encouraged them and not taken on their ways. And when I say encourage, I'm talking about encourage them through the word of God, not encourage them to be rebellious. Absolutely not. But be righteous. (laughs) Sometimes you got to clarify, right? So be renewed in mind, body and spirit. Know that God is with you. Yes, this is where we are as a nation, but it's not going to always be, as you know, keep on praying, saints. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Interim Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, if you haven't given, we do welcome donations. And if you uh, would like to check the description box, okay, that is where you can give. And that is also where you can uh, purchase books. So that is it. Thank you once again. Blessings to you and to God be the glory.